Welcome everyone. Welcome to our open day for food studies and culinary arts in the Technological University Dublin. Um, we have a great suite of programmes available across two campuses, um, depending on what side of the city is yours. Um, we have in the south city, we have the Tala campus and in the city, the north city, we have the city campus. So today isn't really about going through all the details of our programme, they're available on our website. Today is very much about bringing the student experience to you so that you have a heartfelt sense of what it's like to be a student in culinary arts or in food studies in our university. So we'll start first of all with some introductions. My name is Annette Sweeney. I'm a lecturer in culinary arts in the Tala campus. Tom Meany here, a uh, lecturer in culinary arts in TU Dublin Tala campus. James Murphy here, the Assistant Head School of Culinary Arts in the City Campus, currently operating out of Col Brew Street, but moving to our £200 million campus in Grange Gorman in May. So when we see it, it'll be on the City Campus. OK. Hi, my name's Rachel. I'm in my fourth year of studying culinary arts in Col Brew Street. Hi, my name's Sarah Mitchell, and I'm in my second year of culinary arts in Tala Campus. Hi, I'm Robin, and I'm in second year of culinary entrepreneurship. So thank you. So now let's hear what it's like, why, why you chose to do food studies and culinary arts in our university. Tom. Thanks, Annette. Hi, James. Hi, Sarah, Robin and Rachel. Thanks for joining us today. And thanks for everyone else for joining in. You're more than welcome. Uh, whether it's by choice or location, everybody is welcome to join either of our campuses. Um, and Sarah, Robin and Rachel, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions which might help a few people who are joining us to make up their mind. Sarah, can I ask you first, if it's okay, what attracted you to study food studies and culinary arts? Um, I always kind of had an interest in culinary arts and like the kind of baking and cooking side I used to cook with my nanny and my family all the time. And I started working in the steakhouse when I was really little and, well, not little, but when I was young. And then I decided when I was doing the CAO that I was just going to put down all culinary arts and give myself no other option. And well, now I'm in Tala. Well done. And you're enjoying it. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, Rachel? Uh, well, I was 17 doing my leading first. I didn't do TY, so I took a year out because I was quite young and didn't had no idea what I was wanted to do. And then I started working in a bakery uh, in my hometown and I was like, this is it, this is for me. So I applied then for culinary arts in Calgary Street then the following year and I started and I haven't looked back. And is it fair to say you fell in love straight away? Definitely, yeah. Couldn't see myself Super. doing something else. Well done, Robin. Yeah, for my first job when I was 16, I was a little waitress and I just became in love in creating the experience for the consumer and everything management wise behind the food scene as well as food itself so there was no better option than culinary entrepreneurship to one day own my own business fantastic now that you're in second year can you tell us what do you find the most interesting about your course um i think what kind of makes <clears throat> my course different is we the outlook that we have it's not just your basic cooking and you know bacon we really go into like um, like more depth with like like mental health and like mental well-being and stuff like that because like chef is a tough job and I think it's really nice to look into those aspects of it and it's a lot different from other courses you don't really get that very often and that's I think that's my favorite part and just while you mention that those mindful classes do you find they help with the stress of the course on your time management yeah a hundred percent they do they really help and at the start, everyone was like, oh, no, this is not going to, we're not going to, what's this going to do? But now I could never see myself not doing it. Like, it's just, it's it's opened my eyes to a lot of things, yeah. Great, terrific. That's great to hear, yeah. Rachel, how are you most interested in? Uh, I think the diversity in the course is great. Uh, it definitely opens you up to avenues and jobs that you never even considered before. At the moment, I'm doing my thesis on wine studies because I found I really had an interest in the wine studies that I've gotten to do throughout my course. And that was something I never even thought of in first year. And now you've been introduced to so many things by the time you're in fourth year that it's, it's, it's really quite you know diverse and expansive. Yeah, and you've dipped your toe in the wine. Do you find that field quite, quite a lot of variety there? Yes, there is a lot of variety there. So, and it's, it's 
like a job avenue that I never sort of would have explored before coming into this course. And now you never know, it's a possibility. Great, that's fantastic. Robin? Yeah, I just love the balance in my course between practical and theory. So never feel like the week is too long. You're constantly in a kitchen and then you're in a classroom and back in a kitchen or back in the wine tasting. So it just it's not a lot of pressure, but you're always exploring and trying out different things. And is it fair to say every day is different? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Sarah, last question for me. Why did you choose TU Dublin to come and study? Um, I kind of just was looking around, you know, kind of weighing up my options. And I think that tallow was just kind of fell under my feet. And yeah, I just, I really liked it. And I just, I wanted to pursue it. And now I'm here. <laughs> Great, and we're delighted to have you. Rachel, to you Dublin, you chose it, why? Uh, well, I chose it for the course that it was offering primarily, but also I liked that there was sort of smaller, intimate classes. Like I come from a small town and have always been educated in smaller classes, and I like to having that one-to-one -one contact with lectures. You really feel like you're getting the most out of your learning if you have a smaller class and you're not in a massive 300 people lecture hall, you know? Yeah, and, and in this area, that's very important. Is that fair to say? It is, definitely. You need one-to-one -one feedback. Right. Yeah. Robin, how are you getting on? To you, yeah. Dublin? Enjoying it? I never did really plan to go to college because obviously my aspirations can be done through experience. But um, after a gap year or so, I just started looking into it. And then the course offering of culinary entrepreneurship just ticks every single box that I wanted to know about. And it would bring me closer to my path and... It's a good stepping stone. So just the course. Never look back. Never look back. No. Ah, that's great to hear. Terrific. Thank you. James, I'm going to hand over to you now. That's OK. OK, thank you, Thomas. Um, the next couple of areas I'm going to hopefully discuss with you is around your learning journey and your learning experience. And it's patently obvious that you're all at different stages of your learning experience from year two to year four. So uh, my question is to Robin, first of all. So, Robin, what was the biggest surprise uh, to you when you uh, when you started studying food studies and culinary arts? Probably how much there is to it. Like just over the four years we're doing, I don't know how many different modules. And when you look into all the different modules, you just would never have expected that that's something to even considering when opening up a business or just how deep it goes into it. So it was a surprise to me, but a pleasant surprise that I just feel like everything is truly getting covered. Yeah. So the depth, the depth of the yeah. subjects and that. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, uh, and the same question to Rachel, to yourself, the biggest surprise to you. Now you're biggest, a fourth year. Yeah. The biggest surprise to me actually happened this year, I would say, because in first year, you're kind of going, how am I ever going to write a thesis? How am I? I'm never going to be able to do any of this. I don't understand. And by the time you get to fourth year, first of all, you understand how to do it. And second of all, you understand why you're doing it. And I think that's really important. You understand where you're where you got all these skills and how you can now apply them to do a piece of sort of academic work that in first year was the most daunting thing in the world. I mean, it's still daunting now, but it's definitely more manageable. Yeah, the whole research area and research is so important, you know, for your ongoing career, as well as your practical skills and performance. Exactly. Sarah, then how about yourself? Like your biggest surprise? You know? um, I think my biggest surprise was the amount of responsibility we were given. I kind of expected to be like, you know, babysat and like, you know, you do things, but like it's totally not that we run events in Tala, like we were given so much responsibility. We go through different types of cuisine, like we've we've just so much responsibility in bringing our own recipes, our own menus, our own everything. And it's, it's really nice because it's nice to have that responsibility and you feel like that you're in control and you're not just going through the motions because it, it is, it's really interesting. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, so that opportunity to step up and take yeah. take ownership of it. Fantastic, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to then ask you the next question, which is, um, you know, reflecting now at this stage, you know, because of your various experiences that you have, what advice would you give students thinking about who are thinking of undertaking a food studies or culinary arts program? I'm going to put that to you, Robin, again. Um, if you were speaking to young Robin, not <laughs> although you're a very young lady, you're saying there's the 17, 18 year old Robin on her journey. Well, what would you say to her? 
I would say like I have spoken to some people doing the Leaving Cert in the last few years or at the moment and they have their interest in culinary arts or in cooking itself but they don't really know what that would be like in a college setting or what they really want to do with that when they leave school and I say my course culinary entrepreneurship is a really good choice for someone that wants to dip their toes in but they just don't know where they're going with it yet because I've met people that started culinary arts and found that just cooking wasn't for them that they maybe want to manage a restaurant or they want to go on to so many other different things so I think the broadness of my course is an interesting stepping stone into maybe changing course after that if you find that the cooking part is the one for you so being keeping your options open I think. Okay thanks Robin and to yourself Rachel what advice would you give young students? Well, I'd agree with, with what Robin said there. I'd say if, you, if the interest is there, go for it. You don't have to be a chef because you do culinary arts. You don't have to be a baker if you do baking and pastry. You don't have to do that thing. But if the interest is there, go for it. And you'll get so much more out of it. I mean, at a minimum, you'll get a life skill out of it that will carry you through for the rest of your life. And, you know, that's something that's never going to let you down. And you also get fed very well when you're in and you get to taste food yeah, and you'll come in and they'll say we're doing Philip's steak today and you'll be like great so it's I say go for it if the interest is there do it don't think oh I'll corner myself into a career now and I won't have any other experience you'll you will you'll gain so much more academic and practical so go for it so no two days are the same and you never go hungry you never go hungry. No, exactly. <laughs> okay. A recommendation. Sarah, I'm going to put that question to you as well. What advice would you give to young students considering coming into food studies and culinary arts? I think a lot of people's worries is like, oh, I've never worked in a kitchen or I've never, I've never like done anything to do with like culinary or, you know, and their worry is, oh, I'll never be able for it. But 100% from the get go, you go through every single motion, you go through every single pace that you learn everything you need to know. And like, you can never not ask questions. There's always people there to answer questions. And I think people are really scared because it's such a daunting. I think the chef whites are very daunting. And to see someone in front of you, like who was, has years of experience and they're going to train you. I think it is a really daunting experience. But I'd never look back. I'd never change. I could never see myself doing anything else because I just love it so sure. much that I would never, I could not see myself being a nurse or anything. I just, I'm just so interested in it and I just love it so much that I would never be able to look back. Super. So the discipline, the discipline and the formality of it initially, you know, and then you get past those elements and you kind of go, oh, I love this. I love the formality. I love the discipline of it. OK, yeah. thank, thank you, Sarah, for that. Listen, my final question, ladies, is uh, is do you have to complete a work placement or have you completed a work placement? And what was that like for you? So, Robin, I'm going to put that to you first. Yeah, well, our first placement is coming up now, so we're trying to get okay. it secured. And we just had a meeting before this about the placement because obviously with COVID, a lot of other hospitality colleges have just taken placement off the curriculum because it can be a bit harder to find something now. But I actually like that they're going to try to keep us on the track of completing a placement because yeah. it's kind of opening your eyes at alternative routes to getting some work experience done and what that does for your learning. So I haven't done it yet, but looking into it now, I'm very excited. OK, that's great. And Rachel, how about yourself? So you've actually completed work placements, haven't you? In the, so I'd love to hear yeah. your insight. Yeah, well, there's three placements that you complete in culinary arts. The first two, you do one every year by your final year, obviously. And it's a, a four week placement, the first and second year. And then it's nine weeks in third year. So unfortunately, I didn't get to complete my third year of placement. It was supposed to be in uh, Antwerp in Belgium. Uh, and that was all, it was very easy for me to liaise with somebody over there and get that organized. But unfortunately, because of the current situation, it couldn't happen. But in the future, the opportunity might be there for other students. You can go abroad uh, with the support of the school. They're great with getting in contact and keeping in contact with you. Uh, the other placements that I did do were slightly shorter. I found them very useful for me. It, I found out what I sort of didn't want to do. As, which is just as useful, I think, as finding out what you want to do. So I kind of cornered off things and I was like, OK, well, I've tried that and I don't think that's for me or I've tried this and I like that better. So I'm going to explore that more. Like all of that is 
the time to do it and find out what you like is in college, you know? Yeah. And students often say when you have to put the practice into or the theory into practice in the workplace, you really get an eye opener in certain locations. So, Oh, you, you do. Know. And you can, people come on leaps and bounds in, in their cooking. You see from first year to second year, the improvement in people from being on placement and the way that they work, cleanliness, like okay. speed, everything. Super, super. Thank you. I'll put that question to you. Have you completed a work placement or is a work placement coming up for you? Yeah, I've completed mine. So um, for every Friday, so one day a week in first year, we done placement and I loved it. I think um, it definitely, it definitely, yeah, like people come on and leaps and bounds during placement. Like some people, that was their first job in the kitchen for some people. And I think it really does put your theory into practice and you really do learn a lot when you go into like a kitchen and your first kitchen and you're there for, you're right, we're writing like, um, booklets up about you know how the placement was and what we've done and the different jobs sure. and everything and I think um a placement is definitely something that is very important and yeah we're lucky that Super. we got ours finished and all and all and Sarah and all the behaviors and the personalities that you come across in the workplace and dealing yeah. with that yeah yeah there's definitely a wide variety of personalities you find in yeah in well there. that's yeah well, that's yeah. what makes yeah yeah that's does, what it, makes it, it, makes the student and it makes the the chef you really do you kind of carve yourself out when you're on placement don't you yeah so. okay well listen thank you sarah thank you ladies i'm going to hand you back to annette my colleague uh, thanks james so i'm going to ask you now what's a typical day give give our viewers a tip just a sense of a typical day in your course start first with rachel well, a typical day this year is probably a little bit different to what it would have been was um, it last year last year uh coming in on the bus and coming into college, maybe getting something, uh, getting a coffee on the way in and sitting in the canteen, heading to my class, one of my lectures, and possibly having a practical class maybe later that day. The library's always there full of books, to, so maybe go and check out a book or two for assignments and stuff like that. But it's pretty, it's pretty diverse. Okay, thanks, Rachel. Robin, what would your typical day on your course be? Yeah, every day of the week is very different, but say one day we might have a practical class in the morning from nine till one, and then you'd have your little break where you can get some food, even though you probably just ate, but um, a coffee or something, and then you come back for maybe a theory class, maybe health and safety or something to keep up the theory, and then most days are like that, so a nice mix between practical and theory. Very good. And Sarah, what would a typical day on your course be? Um, we It changes from obviously day to day. It's a lot different, but we go through different, like we have our theory classes, we'd have our quick like, culinary kitchen classes. And then in first year, we do a restaurant service. So we get to see both sides of the past, both inside the kitchen and outside the kitchen. So every day we just have different things. We'd probably have most of our practical classes together so we could stay in our uniforms and then we'd have a lot of theory classes all in the one day. So, yeah, it would be every day is a lot different. Very good. OK, so a great variety all around between practical and theory for all programmes. So thank you very much, um, Sarah, Rachel and Robin. So just before we finish up, just to if people need information about our programmes, um, the details, the contact details are coming up on the screen now, but also you can check our website. The whole suite of programs are listed there and you can link in with us today on Pubble if you wish. There are some videos on our website too, linked to specific programs that give you more details. So I think that's important to go to. And just one thing to say that, um, you know, one, one of the very important things, we have such a broad range of programs in food studies and culinary arts. There's something there for everybody. But if you're interested in a career in culinary arts or food studies, that, you know, to remember that we have the building blocks to help you carve out that career. And what I mean by that is you can do a level eight, like the girls are doing, or you can do a level six, and then there are add-on programs to bring you up to a level seven and add-on programs to bring you from a level seven over to a level eight. So I think that's really important to, to remember. So, you know, that there are, there's something there for everybody if you want to carve out a career in this, in this whole area. Uh, within our university and we look forward to meeting you at some stage so you know please keep in touch and link in with us if we can help you in any way 
Um, I don't know if James would like to say a closing remark and Tom would like to say a closing remark. Yeah, Before listen, just my, my thanks to all the students, to Sarah, okay, to Rachel, to Robin for, for joining us in the discussion today, and to my colleagues Thomas and Annette across the university. Uh, and obviously, we hope you choose food studies and culinary arts and come into this discipline. So many career opportunities, so many educational opportunities, and mm -hmm. it's certainly no two days are the same. Yeah, I'd echo that. Um, and also to Sarah, Robin, and Rachel, the very best in your careers. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of variety and great success. And I look forward to plenty of inquiries to here at TU Dublin. Tala, we're looking forward to talking to people. Thank you, everyone. OK, so thank you, Sarah, Robin and Rachel again. And all for joining us. We wish you every success in your decision um, in choosing CAO. And we wish you every success in the Leaving Cert and every success in your overall career. So best of luck and bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Merry bye. Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>